Hi, I'm Mead. Grab a cup of coffee or some water and let's get drawing. Today I wanted to get started with a series of critique videos from people that have asked questions on, on uh, the Learn to Draw subreddit. And um, some of them are going to be figures like this one. Others are going to be analog, objects, perspective stuff. Um, and I just wanted to do this to, to help people out. Um, I think it's important to get good feedback sometimes on your work that's kind of visual and in real time. I think there's different approaches to how you could go about doing a, a drawing like this. Um, so this is actually pretty, um, like a pretty common approach where there's a lot of linear stuff like up here and around here and, um, and in the lips, right? combined with this really really nice blending like if we just look at the blending it's it's kind of um, really expertly done and well practiced um, the values though aren't necessarily um, contributing to all of the anatomy and all of the drawing right so it's that relationship between the sketch and the actual piece itself that perhaps we should work on. Um, so what you have is sort of a like a not quite frontal view because if you look here you can find like the corner here and here and the distance from the corner to the edge of the head is bigger over here than it is here. Okay, um, You'll notice that the head is sort of tilted like this but then the eyes, if we draw a line here, they kind of, the center of the eyes go there, but then this eye kind of tilts this way. So the eyes kind of tilt at different angles. And um, the nose then tilts kind of this way. So what we have, what we want is a 90 degree angle here, or at least the appearance of it in perspective, but we don't have that quite yet. Um, and that's not a big deal. This is all, this is all fixable stuff. The other thing too is we're seeing like a little bit of the bottom of the jaw under the chin. So the head is kind of tilted back, which is also why we see kind of the, the nose bridging out this way and we really see the bottom of the nostrils um, heavily. Um, and that's also why the ear comes down here, right? Normally your ear, you know, your ear hole the actual in the skull usually lines up with the pupil if you look at the if you look at the side of the head right and you have your head something like this and you have your eyes about here right the ear going back directly the whole of the ear lines up right there proportionally and uh, that's just an, an important kind of landmark, right? And then the, uh, you know, the jaw actually comes out just right in front of that hole. So when you build the jaw out, you kind of use that landmark. The other thing too is more or less that hole is in the center of the head this way as well. So um, those are kind of the critical halfway points, right? So you can kind of subdivide the, the head really well that way. Um, so we can just continue working on this sketch and see where we get, right? So we know the head's tilted back, so that's important. So we know that um, when the head tilts back, it's not a perfectly flat surface, so these eyes will probably be aligned more in an arc, right? So we can draw this arc however we want. It can be quite large and go beyond the head. I like to think about the overall head shape, right? And since we're looking slightly to the side, I'll probably want to use an arc that goes like that. Um, and not just a perfectly straight line up and down. And then just kind of work on the head shape here. And I know that I want to show more on the right side than I do on the left. So some kind of sketch like that, right? And we can build onto and build out from that as we need, right? 
the other thing too is like this head is kind of um, it's kind of wide in the jaw um, and I'm not sure whether that's from the reference or not but that's okay so here um, essentially what, what we've done is divide this into quadrants and um, it's a it's a useful tool because that quadrant kind of works sideways right you can see the quadrant already developing on this sketch and if you look at the head proportions from the front that quadrant also makes sense because now we have a main sort of um, we have a main quadrant for the eyes and the anatomy of the upper head and then we have another quadrant to get the sort of teeth and jaw together Okay, so these are kind of the, the big things that we, we would want to work on. Um, now, I'm going to have to move everything a lot, right? I'll probably locate the corner of the eye somewhere around there. Um, I like to use tick marks a lot. Locate the mouth about there. Um, tick marks are kind of cool because they kind of, they can help you out. Um, without you drawing a full eye, you can kind of visualize where everything is going to get mapped out. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is actually um, create a, a flat layer here and uh, fill it so that we can see how our sketch is developing versus what we have as a reference. Um, it heads about five eyes wide with one eye in between them, so that's a good that's a good proportional thing to remember. So what we look for, we'll find, tick mark the bridge of the nose. We know that our nose is going to be built out kind of this way. And we can probably find our overall nose shape sort of like this. Find how it integrates into the mouth. Working these shapes is super important. I think. Um, this helps you find a corner there as well. And then we work into the sort of bone structure here. You know, this stuff will be wrapping from around back and coming out front to find the temple and find the cheekbone. You can go ahead and put the uh, actual eyes in here. Okay, we're kind of developing like a rough and messy sketch, right? And kind of developing these across from each other. So I like to think in, in sort of in terms like of a side to side, like I, if I do something over here, I want to do something over here, right? And then the connective tissue is going to go this way and around. You know, there's a big structure that goes from the top goes all the way down to the jaw, top of the nose, all the way around the jaw. Then there's a substructure around the mouth that goes here. Then you have the actual chin itself, right? So you have sort of a, you know, a large part here, that's like number one. Number two is right here. Number three is your chin. And I guess four or five is, is kind of the, the lip, right? So you would go in here and get your lip curve ready, All right? There we go. So let's see how we're developing. Pretty decent in terms of just like a, a quick layout sketch. Um, then we can find like the uh, anatomy on the sides. We can work on finding this corner of the head right here. Um, we can align the ear along this arc a little a little bit. Um, it looked like in the reference that this ear was attached. We're not going to see much of the ear over here on this side. Um, we can estimate a bone ridge up there. Um, sort of hints at it being a very soft one. And then um, we can kind of sketch in where the hairline is going to be. 
and where the part is. And then from there, we can uh, we can kind of begin to develop um, even further and, and kind of get into some more anatomy. So we know that we're going to see the underside of the jaw here, right? This is Im important because it's tilted back a little. And then um, the sternocleidomastoid muscles are what are kind of indicating this shape down here. And they always create a really nice um, landmark and then they create a hollow at the V where you have the clavicles and the clavicles like come out with this cool like S-curve sort of shape. Then here, you know, you have these muscles coming back which they're kind of um, ropey, I guess. And then you have the throat which comes out here. And then you have your uh, actual structure of the neck, mostly with the, the clytomastoids. And then you have your trapezius in the back. So what we've been able to do is um, take the neck, right, the shape of the neck, which is kind of basically just a, a box, and then we overlay um, a V on it. We put the throat in, and then we put our clavicles in, right? And then we put triangles behind them. So we're able, able to just make use of our basic overlapping idea of like putting one thing behind the next behind the next so that we can create the structure. Um, and it's a really useful thing to do, okay? Now from here, in terms of like how we develop lighting, um, you know, there, there are options. Um, personally, I love starting the painting with um, just really like blatantly dark, um, like chunky <laughs> lighting and, uh, and just full black, you know, maybe 90% in this case. So I'll show you what this does. This forces you to make decisions about like the shape, um, of everything. So if we turn off like my layers and we go back and look at this, what we have is a lighting situation that kind of like um, that kind of comes like from the from the top and and down, um, and that's what's creating you know shapes like this. You have a shape like this, right? And you're getting a little bit of a light here, right? So we want to preserve those interesting those interesting things when we go into um, Developing this, and uh, we'll see what we can uh, we'll see what we can come up with. What working with um, you know a really harsh brush does for you is this forces you into a certain amount of decision making um, about where the shapes are and how and where the light goes. And what you're looking for is basically deciding just what planes are in shadow and what planes are in light. Um, so a big obvious one is like the nose here. And remember, I remember we were getting a little fleck of light on the, uh, the upper part of the eye over here. Just a little hint. And then we know that there's going to be a big corner right here, right? Major corner of shadow. Um, trying for brush here. Yeah, there we go. This one's like chunkier and more brutal, <laughs> which is great for this this type of study that I wanted to show today. Um, know that we're getting um, no light coming down here, right, into this area. Okay, um, or at least not much light. We might get diffuse light, right? Then we're gonna have Definitely a shadow under the eye. Um, most of the eye is probably going to be in shadow. Maybe we'll get like a little fleck in in there, but we don't want to like render too much. Mostly that eye is just going to be in shadow. We're going to get a little bit of shadow here. Um, most likely, we'll get a little bit there. The nose is going to cast a shadow down here, right? We might snag a little bit depending on how puffy this structure is right there. The um, 
lip here is going to be gone. The mouth is open, and so that's going to be in shadow. Um, part of the lower lip will be in shadow. Um, the under structure is going to be in shadow because it's going to cast a shadow down on there. We might sneak sneak a little fleck of light there. The um, chin itself is going to be in shadow. We're going to get a lot of shadow over here on this eye to set that eye backwards. We might get a little shadow shape over here. This ear is going to be all in shadow. Right, Running up, a lot of this hair is going to be in shadow over here. So we create this hair shape that goes back and around. So all of this hair is going to go sort of into the background. The whole neck is going to be in shadow. We're going to get um, a little bit of shadow here. And that's probably going to end the shadow shape. All of this down here is going to be in light. Might get some shadows in the ears themselves. And then we'll get um, definitely some shadow within the hair. Um, especially as it where it meets that. And so the, um, the power of this is in, let's put a warm gray in the background. Um, the power of this is in its sort of like graphic sensibilities. So when we um, zoom out from this, like we see our face emerging um, very clearly. And um, that sense of lighting is very powerful. Um, and when you start to stack, think about like how powerful that is versus how subtle that is. Um, it's a, it's just a different approach, right? So if I want to, I can then um, snag another layer and think about, well, you know, let's say I, I want to look back at my original image and say, well, I know I'm getting some super bright highlights like above the eye. Um, maybe I'll get one on the nose. I'll get a little highlight on the cheek. Um, but mostly it's on that forehead, right? So I can think about like how to bring out forehead anatomy up here, right? And um, I can think about maybe there's going to be a little shiny spot here, maybe a little bit on the cheekbone here, tiny fleck here, maybe a little here, and then very subtle as we go down, right? Um, we can check in again and, you know, think about maybe there's like something on the hair. There might be hair color um, that creates a little highlight in the hair. Probably not, but. Um, if we zoom out again, then we're looking at the indicators of light. You know, then we can begin to spread out from here and think about other areas that get light in, in sort of broad, like these broad strokes. And we're doing this to kind of indicate the way that a form turns around, right? So now what we're working on is this far side. Probably most of this is going to be in this sort of light, we're not going to get those super bright highlights down here, right? Um, might get a little bit over here. Right, the eyes might be more like that. And we actually might need to like jump back down and put a little bit on the bottom of the eyelid here. Okay. So even though this is more like vague, um, it's almost like preferential to uh, to the sort of more obvious um, like chasing after the the line work and then blending because this is becoming like about the like power of the graphic shape and uh, and you're, and it's allowing us to kind of like work through some issues of lighting and from here we can go into the subtlety right like we can think about 
maybe there's some shadow like back here pushing this hair back and then we can like erase this the other thing too is like this approach allows us to work on creating cool shapes right more so than the other approach because um, we can we can just kind of go directly to the shape language um, we can probably erase a lot of this because we're not going to get a lot of light on the hair over here and then to make that meet up we can just like run in and put some shadows out on the hair double check our sketch a little bit be a little more specific about that neck how that hair you know goes behind maybe the hair goes over on this side maybe not anyway so that's that's one approach to it right um, there's there's another sort of approach you could take um, that's not quite as uh, like obviously dramatic um, and if we go back it, it might be something that that you prefer um, so I'm a big fan of just the very simple um, default hard round and soft round pressure opacity brushes and um, what I like to do a lot of times is take this initial sketch that I've developed and then work on um, work kind of from the middle and go outward um, so I'm gonna create another like uh, like blank layer um, and bucket fill that so we can cover that up without effort And then um, work on top from the middle. So take a look back at our sketch. We remember our lighting situation. So now we can go in here and we can work on our lighting. But what we're going to take a different approach. So we're going to start with like a 50% gray, roughly. So what I wanted to do is just show you um, a way to approach this that's a little more delicate. So I'm working very softly with, um, with this brush and uh, essentially what I'm going to do is work in my lighting, but I'm going to start from the middle and start soft. And I'm just going to, you know, work in big areas. That's kind of like the pro level way of starting out is just to start large and work your way small. Um, because working through large areas you get it's like cheap real estate right like you get a lot done and a lot of impact with a lot less effort and time um, and this is going to look rough and unblended uh, which is fine like that's not my goal with this right now um, you can go back and blend there's um this kind of old theory that you know cast shadows create um, harsh edges and rounded um, like form shadows will create soft edges. So you can keep that in mind and, and use that tool, but um, that's kind of an old way to paint. And uh, you know, still I'm thinking about like kind of graphic sensibility, like meaning if I turn this sketch off, like I'm working on just kind of the biggest the biggest shapes first um, and working them flat and solid more or less even though I'm working like very softly in terms of um, the opacity and the pressure and the actual value that I'm working with okay turn that sketch layer off and I'm kind of develop I'm developing this now it's getting better so here I need to run in and sketch out the bottom of that eye. I can put like a placeholder for where this eye is going to be. Largely this eye is going to be in shadow so I'm just going to like blank that eye out. Um, don't need to put like too much fuss into the shadow. So I mean there it is right? Like you can kind of see the shapes beginning to emerge right? And um, I can fuss with these a while to kind of get that 
sketch to show up. But from here, I can turn the sketch off and I can just like play, right? Um, and what I can do is just slowly work out of the middle value range. So I can think of, well, this is a, a shadow core. So I can switch to my soft round brush and, uh, you know, I'm going to go a little darker and I'm going to work that edge and have, have kind of a soft edge that goes around here, right? And shadow cores are interesting because they're, they're darker areas on the shadow. They're darker um, than what you're going to get in terms of like bounce light. So here I'm turning the form. Maybe I have a little bit of the bone ridge showing up there. This is going to be soft down here. This is going to be soft right here. And probably right here too. The chin transition is going to be soft here. This will be soft right around the lip. And then this eye is probably going to be fairly dark-ish. The other thing that I can do is start going lighter than 50%, right? And I can start into my half tones, but I don't want to. I want to be careful in the half tones. I don't want to like do too much in the half tones, otherwise things kind of don't really work out well. So what this is doing is kind of pushing some of the forms back, right? I can probably knock this whole area into like a little bit of a half tone there. Same thing here. And then I can switch back to the hard round brush. You know, go a little darker here and then work on areas of cast shadow. Like I know that this area is in here between the lips where the mouth is open. It's going to be fairly dark. Um, I'm turning a corner here, but um, this edge here is going to be fairly sharp. Sharper than your typ typical soft edge. Um, I'm going to have a cast shadow down here under the lip, so that's going to be fairly sharp. And eye shadows and have a dark spot to send the eye back here. I'm not really worried about hair or eyebrows or anything like that, right? I can kind of work on the shape of the hair and the shape of the hair will also work the shape of the head here. I can double check my sketch. I'm going to pull a little hair in front of the ear because that's always interesting. So I'm getting interesting things happening there. I can bump the shadow down under the eyebrow here, right? I can push the shadows under the nose too. This is going to be a cast shadow under the nose. So it's going to be pretty harsh and sharp. So this might be how you would begin to develop, right? You can take as much time and care as you want with that and, um, and push values back and forth from here, right? Like I know the anatomy up here is like not really great in the forehead, so I could, um, you know, get back into my soft round brush and start to like, you know, make, push some stuff around, make some changes, could start to like, you know, transition this form a little bit better. Um, you know, so it looks a little nicer. I always want to be like zooming out and zooming in and making sure my forms work. So I have sort of an asymmetrical nose here. Doesn't really work. Um, you know, then I can go back and check reference here and just make sure I'm doing the things that I want to be doing. Um, I can change my background into like gray tones or, or light. Um, to give myself new ways of checking and seeing 
I'm really getting any any of the lights that I need to get. Um, you know, I, I like the way the mouth is developing. I don't necessarily like the cheekbone right now. Um, I could take the lighter tones and I could lift the tone on the cheekbone a little bit. I could blend it just a little bit more and work it towards a darker tone by just sort of holding alt and eye dropping. And work darker tones towards the edge here. Probably getting too much reflected light there. I'm going to get a fair amount um, under the chin and I can work on the next shadow because I probably won't get as much reflected light on the next shadow. Um, I can work towards getting an outer edge on the form over here where the hair is going to kind of help define that and I can work softly um, towards that. So this is kind of like an indirect painting technique, right? Where I'm, I'm working and edging towards something. I'm not going for it directly, right? Like this approach is going for it directly. This approach is sneaking up on it, right? Um, both are valid and both are fun. And I think uh, having both in your pocket is always is always going to be worth it to you. Um, because it'll allow you to to attack images in different ways and solve problems in different ways. This is all just basic problem solving, you know. Um, and the other thing too is a lot of times you don't even need more than just a hard and soft round brush um, to be successful with this stuff. You know, I may want to just lose a lot of this information here into shadow and uh, uh, I'll probably just I might like render this other eye a little more work on like how that should go like it's probably not going to be like super bright but it's probably not going to be like mega dark either so I could take like a value and just lift that a little and you know putting in the hours here is is gonna be what makes all this stuff happen and then just you know go back check the sketch like where's my eye actually gonna be I may need to like you know run in with my eraser and you know move the eyebrow down not the eye not the actual eye um, not the hair on your eyebrow I mean the eyebrow ridge right and then I can then come back and uh, you know soft edge because it's turning the form soften it you know erase it soften it again <laughs> until I'm satisfied with that edge so I know that I'm just gonna come back and paint over it later right so it's no big deal um, I can switch back to my hard round pull in that Reduce size, like think about, well, where's that eyelid going to end? Maybe that's a little bit better. I can work that side on the other side to make sure that I'm getting some symmetry. Zoom out, right? Uh, now the, the underdeveloped <laughs> um, cheekbone is looking like zombified over here on the left, so I might need to uh, go back to my soft round. Um, Pick a little mid-tone here and erase into it, go into it with some more delicacy. Just say like, well, make it match up a little more with the right side. Kill more of that. That's kind of more of the shape. Um, I need to soften it so I can just eye drop a lighter tone and just soften that tone a little bit. Push it into the half tone maybe. That might work a little bit better. And then I can just double check there. It's looking ugly, but that's okay. And pick up this tone and work in softly. 
push all that into half tones and now I'm now what I'm kind of doing is pushing the uh, pushing the lips forward here and the chin and I can probably start to cut the far side down shapes looking better. I think you'll start to detect the theme that um, that approaching this and spending a huge amount of time on the early stages is um, worthwhile because it's going to make your finishing stages easier. Um, and what, I'm, what I'm searching for is just heading off problems before they develop, right? So like this right here is probably going to wind up being a problem. Um, this transition here, so I'm just going to soften that. I'm just thinking about planes and anatomy here, right? Um, going back to the, the planes that I set up in the sketch, right? I'm working on basically big overall things and getting them to relate to each other in better and better ways as I develop things. You know, sometimes you get a bit of shadow there on the um, sort of T zone between the brow ridge over the nose gives me just a, a cool like transition that I can have. And one thing that you'll notice that I haven't done is I haven't done um, I haven't taken my my hard round brush, grabbed a black and like dotted out pupils and nostrils, right? That's like the quickest way to kill all of the subtlety that you've done is to do that, right? Um, uh, so jumping to that black is is uh, a little bit dangerous with this method um, you know but at a certain point I do need to make a decision right like if this hair is dark I need to come down to like maybe 70% black and just like start to think about where that hairline is right and start to actually you know push this thing a little bit and so what pushing that value does is that allows me to open up value range in other places right so like if this jump is big, then I can take that um, that value into places like the brow ridge, where there's going to be a high contrast area, and start to push the values down darker, right? And start to push cast shadow values down into the no under the nose, into the mouth. onto the lips and so on and I can push some shadows down here right it's interesting what adding uh, a darker value can do because um, you still want to be delicate you still want to be soft but then at a certain point you also have to be like you also do have to have this make decisions right remember too that this eye socket is kind of like it's a ball right the eyeball um, so you have to kind of play around with that and remind yourself that you know this is a an eyeball it's rounded so you're rendering it more or less like a sphere right cool so just to review these basic approaches in terms of your value range you have basically you have your darks over here right and your values like can go anywhere Get your mids and your lights, right? So essentially what we did on the first one is we went uh, inward. And then on the second one, we started in the middle and we work outward, right? And they're going to end up in a similar place, right? Um, you know, we've got this approach versus this approach. And they're both equally valid ways of beginning a painting. I think um, in terms of beginners, like if you're just starting, I think this approach is great because um, you can judge the shapes a little bit better. Uh, the brushes you do use don't matter as much. Your um, technical rendering ability doesn't matter as much. And your ability to sketch doesn't matter as much. In fact, with this one, you don't even really need to do like the sketch layer. You can just go in with the dark black shapes and start doing studies. Um, so. Uh, you know, and then from here, 
you can take these things and start to color them. Like here I can lock the layer and you can do this in Procreate too. I can say, well this is dark, but maybe I want this to be a, like a dark, um, like a dark super saturated violet and I can go in with any brush, right? Um, take that oil brush that I had and I can just put that in the, the dark areas. and see how that looks in terms of color, right? Um, looks kind of cool. I may want to um, cool that down as I go down here so that I get a transition of warm to cool. Um, and then I can go into the light layer, right? this layer, I can uh, lock the transparent pixel pixels there. I can do a complementary. I can pick a, uh, a yellow that's um, like much lighter and fairly saturated and I can run that guy in. Over all of that. What I should have done was I should have put every single value on a different layer. And then I can go um, like cooler and darker as I go down away from the light. Actually, I'll warm that up and just go cooler and darker like that without going into the greens. And then I can go into my background um, and then I can change that up, right? Like I can say, well, mid-tone will go, uh, we'll go fairly warmish, right? Keep it right in the center. And we can do this. So this is kind of fun, right? So this is an easy way to play with color and you know, you can and it's an easy way to transition. So you can go cooler and darker by taking out some saturation. And start to just play around with your ideas about color theory and, and where you might want to take color. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's again a very cheap way to sketch and, and, uh, and by cheap I mean like simple, effective, and easy and gives you an idea of what a more developed color scheme might look like, right, without having to blend. So um, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I hope you get a lot of value out of this. Um, you know, if you want me to definitively, definitely critique your stuff, sign up on Patreon. Um, Otherwise, I may ask you to on, on Reddit, or you know, you can always ask me questions by uh, sending me an email or commenting on the video.